this weekend a bandweight banger that absolutely would have fit into last weekend's lineup with the eight finishes on that card holy smokes how great was that we have Brian Kelleher, the nickname's Boom. He's taking on Mario Bautista of No Fixed Nickname. And when I look at this fight, Matt, these guys are so well matched. I mean, for Mario Bautista, comes into the UFC making his debut against... Corey Sandhagen, and he landed some good shots in that fight. I mean, he landed some nice leg kicks. He landed that overhand right that he has. And, of course, he goes for a takedown, and he gets reversed, and he gets caught in an arm bar. So he loses that fight, and that's fine. I mean, for Bautista, it's been weird. I mean, he's had some injuries. He's had some layoffs. He had a torn right pec that kind of kept him away from the Trevin Jones fight till he fought Jay Perrin, or rather... The Miles Johns fight until he fought Trevin Jones. But if you look at it, that's it. Fights about once a year. Wants to get moving. I read his UFC.com interview that he had done before his last fight, which wasn't supposed to be Jay Perrin, but ended up as Jay Perrin. And he wanted to get the ball rolling. Well, good news for him. Second fight of this year. And you like to see that because for Bautista, after he lost to Corey Sandhagen, went out there, fought Jin Su Sun, a guy who was always a lot of fun a in his man. two UFC fights. And Bautista went out there, mixed it up. Had great strikes. Had some good moments when it came to his grappling. Goes out there and fights Miles Johns. And listen, Mario Bautista, you know what you're going to get out of his fights. Because he's going to throw good boxing combinations while moving forward. He's going to end things with a kick or start things with a kick. He's a lot of fun when it comes to those flowing combinations. But for Bautista, he's no stranger to, I'm going to throw a flying knee. And if it hits you, it hits you. If it doesn't hit you, I'm going to throw more of them. He did that against Perrin. He's done that in the majority of his fights. Spinning attacks, flying knees. If you liked Ricardo Hamos last week, you like a guy like Bautista. He loses to Trevin Jones, which when that guy's on, he's on. But when he's off, boy, he's off. And then for Bautista's last time out, takes on Jay Perrin. And in that fight, he was originally supposed to be taking on Kelly Taha. Perrin is a gamer. Perrin takes the fight out of New England. And Matt, it was pretty much all Bautista in that fight. So we didn't necessarily learn a lot, but it was a good opportunity for Bautista to get fresh, get a fight in, and now he's going to be taking on Brian Kelleher, a guy who was battle-tested if uh, if it's never been said. I really liked how Mario Bautista looked in that Jay Perrin fight, and I understand that was a fight he was kind of expected to win going into it, but still, coming off a TKO loss to a guy like Trevin Jones, you never really know where somebody's going to be after that. So I just thought that was a great performance to kind of get that rust off him, if you know what I mean. Just get a good win under his belt. And this fight against Brian Kelleher could get him back on track to maybe not getting a ranked opponent next, but someone near the rankings, because Kelleher is an extremely well-respected fighter, in this division and even though he hasn't beaten all the best guys in the division he's definitely fought them at this point of his career now hold on does he have a win on his record over the best bantamweight of all time he does Hennem Burrell crumbled under the power of Brian Kelleher but you have to remember he also fought John Lineker back at like UFC 223 and if you know anything about John Lineker that man comes to crack and he did knock out John Lineker or he did knock out Brian Kelleher very bad Sh John Lineker a guy who lost by split decision to Corey Sanag and the UFC said see you later we don't need any more of this it was wild, and I love John Lineker. Hands of Stone, nicknamed after Roberto Duran. I think this fight will be very fun, though, because I do think Mario Bautista has the higher ceiling, I would say, out of these two athletes. Even Brian Kelleher on his best day is still somewhat basic with the way he goes about his fighting. It is a lot of... I would say basic boxing combinations. He doesn't go to the body as much as you'd probably like. A bit of a headhunter. Has good but not great power, I would say. Can clip you if you're on your way in and not really watching yourself defensively. But for the most part, Brian Kelleher is not the type of fighter who you think, wow, he's going to go in there and drop the guy with one shot. But against Mario Bautista, he does leave that window open. And that's been my big point about Bautista. He reminds me of... Uh, there's grapplers like Gerald Mearshart out there who... Not everyone's Jacques Array, who they have 20 submission wins and no submission losses, even though Jacques Array has one submission loss. Some grapplers... They they have like 11 submission wins and like four or five submission losses. You get, if you just grapple a lot, some other guys are going to grapple you. You're going to grapple some other guys. Like a Charles Rosa. Exactly. That would be a very good example. For Mario Bautista, he does almost strike in that way to where I'm a very good striker, but I do leave holes open to where if you do have good power and if you do throw awkward strikes, he will leave himself open. And it is because he focuses so much on his own offense. He is somebody who goes to the body, goes to the head, will mix in his own kicks. But the problem with Bautista is that he will... In, I don't know, in search for more offense, just completely abandon his own defense. And that's something I do worry. I guess a guy like Brian Kelleher who can drop you and on your way up get in that guillotine. Going back and watching Bautista on the tape, I agree with you 100%. He'll go for those combinations. And again, he can rip to the body, go overhand right, finish with a kick. And then we're still right here and our hands are down. And then he gets hit a couple of times. And against a guy like Kelleher that throws a lot of power shots in tight. Kelleher is one of those guys... 
and you hate it. Tall guys that have range, but they have no idea how to use it. Uh, short guys that don't have range, but never get on the inside and try and jab their way in. Brian Kelleher knows how to get in and out, and I make the comparison all the time. Obviously, it's out there because Kelleher finishes a lot of fights by guillotine. There's two guys that you can compare him to. One's Nick Lentz. The Carney. Two's Georgie Carhanian. All three of those guys, they fight very similarly. In and out, a lot of guillotines. They give themselves up positionally. I think Nick Lentz is like the Charizard of this Pokemon evolution, though. Yeah, I mean, Charmander is, of course, Georgie Carhanian. Yeah, and yeah. In the middle is Kelleher, which is odd because Carhanian was a champ with World Series, but that's neither here nor there. Brian Kelleher had a good run in the ring of combat. And two wins over Julio Nick Lentz Arce. almost fought Conor McGregor at 145, but everybody forgets that. And he would have beat him, too. But, Matt, when it does come down to this fight, I mean, a few of the things that I wanted to throw out there. Obviously, we see the fact that these guys have some bonuses on their career. You look at it for Keller. Three performance bonuses, two fight of the nights, one against Damian Stasiak, one against Hunter Azure, where Keller got beat in that first round. And then Hunter Azure had nothing left in the tank in the second, and Keller was able to finish him. We look at the odds for this fight. Kelleher open to plus 120, plus 130 right now. Bautista's line has moved a little bit. Open to minus 140, minus 160. I almost said it like Joey Bats with the Blue Jays. Bautista, see you later. We have a look, uh, though, at the topology vote. Surprise to us there to you. I will say over under on the fresher, younger fighter who has much less in terms of experience on his record. I'm going to say over under. 67.5% Bautista. I was going to say 70, so above. You're going to say over, slightly under 451 total votes, 59% Bautista, 71%, sorry, 81% by decision for the 41% that have Keller, 57% by decision, 21% by submission, 16% by knockout. So, Matt, again, I do look at this one. If you're Bautista, do you sit there like every Friday night in like your living room by yourself with the lights off, kind of like Shia LaBeouf in the movie theater, like smiling and crying a little bit at the success that he had against Corey Sandhagen in his debut? I mean, him and Uriel Contra are probably hand in hand <laughs> in that theater together if that is the case. Yeah, and listen, you have to be a hardcore of a hardcore to understand that reference. But I look at this one, Kelleher, Instagram, just got married like two weeks ago, so that's cool. Like a lot of wedding pictures out there, so good for Brian Kelleher. I'm sure his lady's a fan of that. But when I look at this one, Matt, for Bautista, training with John Crouch, whose name we never hear, barely ever, at the MMA lab, you look at the training partners for this fight, Kyler Phillips is one of those guys, but I look at the head coach of Benson Henderson as a guy that's going to be able to work you through some of those positions that if you overextend yourself, Benson Henderson's the king of a scramble and a submission. Brian Kelleher is cut from that same type of cloth. Not necessarily the same in the scrambles, but Kelleher is very good in those aspects. So for Bautista, that's a great wrinkle to have in your game plan. Keller, though, fight in, fight out. Very, very good. And you look at the losses, it's the good competition. Obviously, Nurmagomedov's his last loss. That's forgivable. Can you I look- be honest? I yeah. think he's going to lose like Court McGee lost to Jeremiah Wells. Like, I learned a lesson last weekend. <laughs> Here's the thing. Brian Keller has a good chin. I think we can all agree on that. You know how we know he has a really good chin? It's because he gets hit clean in a lot of his fights. Even when he wins by a landslide, there's still a moment in all of his fights where he's getting hit by clean shots. And yes, he doesn't always go down from them, but Mary is the type of guy who when he hits you clean, you are going to go down from it. And he's a much younger, much more explosive type of athlete. I really think this is a poor stylistic fight for Brian Kelleher because he is the type of fighter who will be willing to strike with Mario for a little bit early on in this fight. And I think he's going to get clipped hard in that early going. Kelleher likes to strike himself into a clinch and then work from there. He can pound the uppercuts. He can work the body. He can take you down. Mario Bautista is very good in the clinch. Understands his big frame at 135 pounds. And if you try and clinch him up, he's really good at getting that plum. Then snapping your neck out of the way and spinning out of there. Landing elbows on the break. So I like Bautista in this fight as well. Doing the tape study for this one was an absolute pleasure. If you don't get the chance to go out there, please do watch some of their fights. Because it's a lot of fun. But both of us going with the man now out of Arizona previously out of a small town in Nevada, it is Mario Bautista. Can't wait for the fights coming up this weekend. 12 on the docket, Zaruki and Gamrot in that main event. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, we always say. Let's get get into it. it.